Hi guys, we are back today to do a video on how to age paper with watercolour. So I'm not using any coffee or tea, we're just going to use watercolour and create these gorgeous aged papers. So uh, you can see here I've got the ledger paper that starts out completely white and that is what we're going to create. So you can see here I have several different colors so and also different types of paper so you don't have to use ledger paper you can use regular copy paper you can use I what I've got here is the ledger paper and the cotton paper so I've showed this before you can get it from Walmart or you can get it on Amazon so and I'll show you what the box looks like in a minute but you can see there the difference between the darker brown or the lighter brown and I've also got a piece here that I did just pinks, so I'm not fully happy with this, but again, um, this is something I need to work on and colors, you know, will work. I just got to figure out kind of, should I be putting more French ochre down first and kind of seeing how that goes. So one thing I will warn you of is don't use your best paints because you will go through a lot of paint. So when I first started this, I was doing like 40 pieces. So I went through almost two tubes of Daniel Smith and then I realized you know it was um, not necessarily giving me the the dark values that I needed so I went to the Magello paints because I know that they have a really high pigment content um, and again you can probably find student grade paints at Michaels or something else like that to use for this so one of the things that I'm thinking to do today, what I was thinking before I started the video, was getting some papers to fill in this journal that I created. So like I'm looking at these colours and I was thinking to be able to make some of these as to use as flips for in this journal. And so between doing the voiceover and actually filming the video, I have uh, added some of these things in. So you'll see those in a later video. but. But when I started this, I, I wasn't sure. So I was just kind of looking at some of these pages, thinking whether I could use any of these, seeing uh, what colors or shapes that I wanted to create in the video today. And then I decided that I did like this piece in the journal here. So uh, you'll see me fold this up and put this in. And I debated on whether or not to take this out of the footage, but I think it's important to see how you can use these pieces of paper as well. So you can see here that this piece has a tear in it and that's another thing I wanted to show you if you are doing this and your paper tears it's not a problem it's supposed to look old old and aged so you can definitely just put some washi tape over that So this is the reason that I really love making these papers because it creates such a, an ambience in your journal. It's a really, uh, it's a really nice extra touch, and it just creates that whole feeling of um, a well-loved, well-worn um, journal. And so while I was doing this, I thought I should just pull out the paper packs as well and show you that I do have a couple of these in the shop. 
and you can create your own journal like my one uh, using these paper packs so they're pearlescent papers they're cotton papers and they're really beautiful and they do have one of these aged papers in there as well so you can kind of see how uh, that feels and how it was created uh, and I'm just kind of showing you a couple of ideas with the paper packs as well because I just think it's um, when I started creating the journals I wanted to do it for uh, every price range so you have ones on there that you can print off you can print these off yourselves and create journals you have some paper packs in there where you can buy the papers already sort of uh, printed and the different papers that I like and then you can make a journal and I have a whole video on that or you can buy the finished product so and I am working on a couple of powder blue ones at the minute they're gorgeous like seascape ones and they'll have some printables that come along with them as well. So I really love using envelopes as well in the junk journals and you can cut the sides and make side pockets. You can sort of cut the envelope flap and create like um, half up, you know, so that one would be a lift up pocket. And you can see kind of how I create these journals in another video that I'll as well link where I've made a full collection out of this uh, paper pack. And then the so I'll link the two videos, one with the finished product and one that shows you how to actually make the uh, an insert or a junk journal and how I like to bind them. So you don't have to use these papers, but it also goes through and shows you the paper packs, the digital printles, printables and everything like that. Okay, so let's get to the actual tutorial. So uh, we take this plain white piece of paper again you can use I think the reason this works so well is because this ledger paper is thicker than copy paper so I haven't tried it with regular copy paper you might want to try a thicker copy paper um, but again I'll show you after we do this one we'll do one with the cotton paper and I'm using a Princeton brush that I got on sale at Michaels and my regular uh, I watercolors but here is the paper from Walmart so it is a cotton paper it's a really nice quality you can get so the one at Walmart's 24 pounds and it's ten dollars or you can get a 32 pound which is a thicker paper on Amazon for about 20 and I really love this paper I love to print on it I love to draw and write on it um, it's great to use watercolors in your journals as well so you can see there I've just squeezed out some of the Magello paint onto the side and I'm going to use a few colours from my regular palette but I don't want to waste those, I'm running low so I just uh, was looking for something else that I could use. So uh, again, like the Magello ones are good because they're quite pigmented but I, I think on the ones for the journals that I used mainly used Daniel Smith, Van Dyke Brown and French ochre and the um, roasted French ochre I think. So what I'm doing here is I just completely saturate the paper with water and then I start to drop in colour so I always saturate the paper first you need you know a drop cloth or like a garbage bag underneath you and then um, you the paper needs to be fully wet quite wet like you don't want just a little bit of water you want a lot of water so that the pigment can move and then I just start putting the paint down and you can see here I am not being careful you don't have to worry uh, about making it pretty at this point it's an old piece of paper and you're just getting color onto the paper you can add patches of different colored browns as well or different colors I mean that's where I did the pink one but specifically if you want the aged look you can use lighter browns to create you know the softer uh, toned paper that I showed in the beginning or if you want these darker really aged looking papers you can uh, use the darkest browns that you have
So you'll see throughout the process I really like going over some of the edges and some of the corners uh, to d darken those up. Then we just turn the page over and we do the same thing. We wet the whole surface and then we uh, put pigment down. Now you won't need to put as much down on the back because the front was um, so saturated that a lot of that's come through. Again you can see here I'm doing the sides really well. Okay, so we have completed the first step, but how do we make it look like that? So the next step is really the crucial element and that is just scrunching it up. <laughs> so you might be frightened to do this, but I promise you this is the best way to get the result that we need. So you scrunch it up and then you open it out and I'm actually doing it a little bit different now than when I started. I am actually pleating it, sort of. You can see that when I unravel it. So you'll see at the end the comparison, but I used to just lay it flat at this point and then do these next steps. But now I'm really inclined to pleat it and make it even more uh, textured. And then what I do is with a pretty dry brush, we're sort of doing a dry brush technique here. So. Obviously the brush is still wet, but I've um, sponged a lot of the water out of it. I'm getting pigment and I'm dry brushing it over just over the peaks of the paper. So just where the paper is raised a little bit, I'm just brushing some extra color and it's also gonna go darker because you're not uh, watering it down. And then you can start to see this paper come to life where there's lighter pieces of the paper where we didn't put as much color. And then there's these darker pieces that we're introducing now. So this is one of my favorite parts and we're getting the Winsor & Newton Gold drawing ink and I just always feel like the paper is not complete until I do this part so we dip that in the brush and in we dip the brush in the gold ink we're doing the same sort of dry brush technique but the really nice thing about this is that it is water soluble so if you feel like you've made a mistake you can go into the water and um, soften that out Okay, so the next thing we do is get, uh, I actually changed paintbrushes here. I need a paintbrush with, this is a mop brush, so something that holds a lot of water uh, so we can splatter it um, and just tap it and create little droplets. But I don't wanna use the really large brush because A, the droplets will be too big and B, it will waste a lot of ink, so. Okay, so the final step here is getting a little bottle, like I, you can use a cup as well, but I like these little sort of apothecary rings. So I use an essential oil bottle, I put watercolor around the rim, and then I um, put that on the page there, stamp it on the page. So you can see here the difference in the color range that you can get here. So we're going to uh, try one now and create this softer gray color. Okay, so you can see here this is the cotton paper and the first one I folded in four and the second one is where I started to sort of pleat the paper.
Okay, so I'm starting in the same way. I am basically drenching the paper with water and I'll hold the paper up in a minute so you can see uh, how much sort of glean or glisten the paper should have on it. Okay, so how do we get the softer grey colours? What I used was uh, Daniel Smith Cobalt Blue and Daniel Smith Van Dyke Brown. But what I'm using here is just basically an Ultramarine and a Van Dyke Brown from Magello. And then I just mix that together and we're watering it right down. So I, at one point I realised that the mixture is too brown. I don't think you can see that on camera. Um, so I just add some more blue in to create to get it more towards the grey scale. Now if you have a black watercolour you can water that right down uh, to do this. I think it would be really nice with like a hematite or um, a Mars black or something like that. You could add a little bit of brown into a Mars black or a little bit of blue or purple or, or anything really. Maybe a little bit of an ochre. So again, you can see this is really haphazard. I am just trying to cover a large area. I'm not trying to um, be careful with my brush strokes. And then when I feel it's too dark, I get more water and um, just spread it out. And if I need more pigment, I grab more pigment. And then we turn it over and we do the same thing again. So I don't even think I really wet this first. I think I'm just going straight in with the wet paint. And then because the uh, page has been sitting on the plastic, you can see it starts to get these um, effects of where, where it's sitting, which is quite nice as well. And so we're not actually scrunching this one, we're just going to leave it to sit. And what I uh, do here is just fold it in thirds and I pleat some of the page. So I like to start with the corners and just basically pinching it and creasing it until you and then maybe unfolding it and then tearing up just a little bit of the uh, fold as well and then you can see here so this got a stain on it from being in the um, I didn't sort of realize where I was putting it there but it actually turns out really nice and that's one of the things about creating these they all turn out differently and don't worry if you make a mistake, it might turn out really nice in the end. So we are starting out here not with the gold. I'm going to use this Sennelier Silver. I've really been enjoying this one. Uh, and I'm going to get the mop brush again and just tap that really lightly. And I'm not really doing too much else to this. So just a couple of highlights with the silver and we're calling this pretty much done. And then we just wait for these to dry and I'll show you the finished result.
So here you can see the finished result and then I will actually show you how I put this in my journal but it's so beautiful. You can see because ultramarine is a very granulating color that the colors separated and they've created this really nice coloring on the page. And you can see here in the middle how it's created like the botanical eco print uh, type of situation. I really love this. So it's turned out really beautifully and that's just from the plastic. It's not, a, you know, the creases. It's not even from leaves or anything which you could also add to this. And so you can see here how it fits in my journal. I'm going to actually just attach it with some washi and then it'll be like a tip in, but it just creates such an extra element to your journal. So you can put the, you, you could write letters on these. Um, you know, it's just such a really nice extra. And here's the other piece and you can see once these are dry when they've been pleated they basically stay like that so the paper is just going to stay with those pleats in it and you can either pull them out or not but I really love how it's um, creating that kind of effect and I'll show you this versus the ones that I used to do that are plain and this one just adds so much character to the page. So here you can see uh, the first type that I did and here you can see it with the uh, new creases in it and uh, that's it for this tutorial guys. I hope you've enjoyed this and let me know if you try it and how you go. You can see here that, that the ones that you leave laying flat, it's, very, it's harder to crease them, it's still possible but it's so much easier to crease them and to form them once they're in the wet stage. Anyway, that is it for today. I will see you guys next time. Bye.